Hi, Jim McConnell, McConnell Labs, manufacturers of Light Elegant Snow products. We're here for another Chemist Corner today. Today we are going to be discussing the differences between emittance and wattage. So the key thing on emittance versus wattage is very, very important. Wattage is the amount of electrical consumption. So how much energy will that light require in order for it to operate? versus emittance. Emittance will depend upon how much wattage goes into it, but it also depends upon the quality of the LED lights, the quality of the circuitry that goes uh, into the manufacturing of that light, if it's soldered or push connect, because sometimes you, if the push connects don't work all that well, you can actually lose a lot of energy just in the idea that you don't have a soldered connection. So what we're talking about today, again, emittance versus wattage. So bear with me here. When we're talking about, about wattage, when the light turns on and it turns on here, you have every one of those LEDs that's inside the light. Those LEDs will require a certain amount of power. But you also notice that you have a cord. And then on that cord, you have an AC-DC adapter. Sometimes these AC-DC adapters aren't made all that well. And when they're not made very well, they'll consume a fair amount of electricity, converting electricity into heat. Not all electricity converts directly, I'm gonna turn that on again, into light. So light will be part of the conversion. That's one form of energy, but heat is also a different form of energy. So energy in has to equal all the sums of the energy coming out. So the amount of energy that's used to produce the light is a certain amount of energy. A certain amount of energy is used to, to convert the AC circuit, alternating circuit coming out of the wall, to the DC circuit coming out of the converter. So that's a certain amount. If you have this little plug-in that goes into the back of your light, you can actually lose some power at that plug-in. You also have the plug-in that goes between these two units. So if you have a lower quality plug here or a lower quality receptacle in there, you can also lose some power. So when we're doing all of this, making sure that you conserve as much of that power as possible is crucial. We can measure power loss simply by using an infrared thermometer. So here we can measure how much power loss or how much power is being converted to heat by just measuring how much heat's being generated here at the light. So we're at 82.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Whereas our ambient temperature in the room is 74, 74. So we have some power loss there. Um, so that power loss is the conversion of energy, electricity, to heat. We can also check the power loss that might exist here in the AC-DC adapter. So here at the AC-DC adapter, we're at 80 degrees. So we're losing some power in that location. And then I can also measure how much power loss is there in the bottom. So we're at 79. So we're losing a little bit of power here where the power cord plugs into the AC-DC adapter. So all of those are crucial. And all of those will reflect how much energy actually gets transferred to producing the, the, the light that we get a chance to use when we cure our gel products. Hopefully that's been fairly helpful. Now, about emittance. So emittance is actually the measurement of how bright that amount of light or energy that's coming off of the LEDs is. When we take a look at that emittance, if we put a reflective plate on the bottom of the light, we are then converting some of that energy that's being uh, created by the LEDs so that those LEDs will create that light. It goes down, bounces off the reflective plate, and then bounces back. So it helps cure or continue to cure that gel product. When we're doing that, um, some of that energy will then be converted into something we can actually measure. So here we have just a quite an affordable 
UV uh, spectrophotometer radiometer, and it measures everything from 320 nanometers up to 380 nanometers. So if we put the sensor into the light and turn the light on, we actually get a measurement inside that light. And we just try to make sure that the sensor is placed in the same location each and every time. And right now we are at 7.53. So that's the maximum amount of energy that this LED light will produce, ranging from 320 nanometers to 380 nanometers. We do know that the emitters that are inside this light are 365 and 395. So this sensor will not measure anything that is above 380. So we're only measuring the amount of UV light that's being generated from those emitters. If we can convert at some time in the future, convert the energy loss, take that thing out, energy loss back here, energy loss in the cord, energy loss in the AC-DC adapter, so that we have no energy loss there, even without changing anything inside the carrying light, we'll probably get even a higher emittance value. Okay, so hopefully that made, it, made some sense here. So if we're talking about wattage, we're talking about energy consumption. If we're talking about emittance, we're talking about how much light is being generated. Two completely separate uh, issues. So if your light is rated as a 48 watt or 36 watt or 32 watt, that gives you an approximate value of how much energy that light's gonna be able to generate. However, it won't give you all of the information. So making sure you choose the right light based on the recommendations from the manufacturer. That's your safest way to go. Thank you. It's been Jim McConnell, Chemist Corner, coming to you from Redmond, Oregon, Light Elegance Headquarters. Thank you. Bye-bye.